It is Tuesday. It's the 14th of January. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Our top stories today. A bomb, a deadly shooting, and a vote on that could strip religion out of Egyptian politics. You are looking at uh, live pictures of Cairo where people are lining up to cast their ballots in a controversial referendum. Blood was spilled shortly after voting got underway. A member of the Muslim Brotherhood was reportedly shot dead outside a polling station after clashing with security forces. A bomb went off outside a courthouse before the polls opened. No one was injured in that blast. Well, let's take a closer look at what uh, Egyptians are voting on and what's at stake, as well as banning religious parties. The draft constitution also puts more power in the hands of the military, but some analysts say it's an improvement for freedom of expression and human rights. This will be the first time Egyptians vote since former President Mohamed Morsi was ousted by the army in July. Mr. Morsi's Islamist supporters okay, say they are boycotting the referendum, but analysts say it is still expected to pass. Well, Reza Saya is in Cairo. He joins us now. Reza, some would say that this actually looks like um, is Egyptians are given with one hand, but taken uh, some of their rights with others, with the army being more popular than ever now. Yeah, Monita, the controversy and the tumult uh, continues. Uh, critics of this Constitution say... All right. Reza, thank you. Reza, say they're live for us from Cairo. Let's bring you up to date on some of the other stories we're following for you here at CNN News Center. About 20,000 anti-government protesters are occupying major intersections and marching on government buildings in the Thai capital. That's far fewer than the 170,000 who took to Bangkok Street on Monday. They want Prime Minister Ying Lak Chinawat to resign and they want the country's political system overhauled. Pakistan has nominated the teenager who died while stopping a suicide bomber for the country's top bravery award. 15-year-old Atiyaz Hassan Bangash blocked the suicide bomber from entering his school in northwestern Pakistan last week. The posthumous bravery award will give his family $5,000. Hassan's school and a stadium in his town will also be named after him. French President Francois Hollande is due to give his annual New Year's press conference in just a few hours. He was hoping to focus on the economy, but is likely to face questions about a magazine report that he's allegedly having an affair with an actress. 300 women and children were killed when an overloaded ferry capsized on the White Nile River in South Sudan. An army spokesman says they were trying to get away from the violence that has gripped the nation for weeks. The accident happened near Malakal in the northeast of the country on Saturday. In Florida, a retired police officer is in custody in a deadly movie theater shooting. He's accused of pulling the trigger on a man all because that man had been texting on his phone. Tori Dunham joins us now from Fort Lauderdale, Florida with more on this story. Tori? So Monita, imagine what this was like. It was the middle of the day. There were about 25 people inside the theater for a incredibly sad story there, Tori. Thank you very much for that, Tori Down on there, live for us from Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Russia has banned an American journalist. David Satter had been working as an advisor for U.S. broadcasters Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty since September. Moscow now says Satter grossly violated Russian laws and had stayed in the country illegally. Satter says his visa was rejected on the grounds his presence was undesirable. He spoke to our colleague John Vaz earlier. In my experience it's unprecedented to use that kind of language in relation to a journalist or writer. Journalist David Satter speaking with CNN's John Vaz earlier. One of Satter's pieces critical of Russia appeared on CNN.com in December but he says he does not know what prompted his expulsion. You are watching CNN News Central live from Hong Kong. Dis watching CNN News Central live from Hong Kong, I'm Monita Rajpal. Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan is under intense criticism for signing a new law criminalizing same-sex relationships. It forbids homosexual clubs, groups, or meetings imposing a 10-year prison sentence for what it calls those crimes. It also outlaws same-sex marriage. Well, this new law has been described as a big setback for human rights. Let's bring in Vladimir Dutier. He's from Lagos. He, Vlad, a lot of countries have raised serious concerns about this law. Just how broad is this? 
Hi, Marina. Well, you know, as you mentioned, uh, Samantha Power, who is the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, tweeted out yesterday. Right, that, thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. Well, as we've mentioned, homosexuality is illegal in most African nations. Take a look at this map. All 77 countries that consider homosexual acts illegal are highlighted here in purple. In addition to Africa, there is a large number in the Middle East and South Asia. Homosexual acts are punishable by death in five countries and in some parts of Nigeria and Somalia. Same-sex marriages are recognized within 14 countries. We've highlighted those in yellow. It CNN Freedom Project takes you into a shocking case of newborns sold to human traffickers. A number of families in China say that's what's happened to them. Now the doctor they trusted has been convicted and could face execution. David McKenzie joins us now live from Beijing with more on this very sad story. David? What well, is a very sad story, Monita, and a shocking one. Certainly last year when the story first broke, the scandal which rocked. All right, David, thank you very much. David McKenzie, live first there from Beijing. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Up next. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. The second day of the Australian Open is underway, and Australian player Bernard Tomic has uh, pulled out of a match against Rafael Nadal due to a groin injury. During a break, Tomic called for uh, medical assistance and in the end had to retire because the pain was just too much to bear. Meanwhile, Roger Federer managed to keep his cool and bag yet another win in a match against James Duckworth. Federer sailed to a straight set win. So they were feeling the heat there in Melbourne and uh, other parts of Australia. Mario Ramos is at the World Weather Centre with more. And that heat is not just unbearable for players, but also some parts of Australia, did, they're dealing with fire. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Uh, even though the temperatures have cooled off across western parts of Australia, we got to take seriously. Back to you. Right. Mari, thank you very much. You're grounded. That's the message from Southwestern Airlines to a pair of pilots who landed their passenger plane at the wrong Missouri airport. They've been removed. You are watching CNN News Center. I'm Monita Rajpal at CNN Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes with a look at